is Pipnot, and in today's video, I'm going with some more of the Dark Souls. In the last video, I said that we were going to show up here. I did manage to get the Chaos Flame Ember from the middle, middle of those uh, demons in the lava. It took an extreme amount of time off camera, but I did get it. Uh, we've got two red titanite chunks. And I did not go back for the rusted iron ring because we've already been through the swamp area. And I just don't see a need to go back and get it. I don't think I need it. Unless I just want to get it. To have it for maybe a different playthrough, but as of now, I really don't need it, so I'm just gonna leave it out to save some time. Why, that's an ember unlike any that I have seen. A very curious pattern. Could it be the flame of the legendary witch? I know. Suppose you left that ember with me. Old Vamos would never let you down. No, not ever. So he pretty much wants the ember for who knows why. The item description was that the only people that can use it would be people who know the ancient methods of how to use it. Uh, and he just then seemed like he had absolutely no clue. Well, he knew what it was, but he didn't have like a very good clue. So now we can upgrade to the Chaos Zwihander. And I think I can actually upgrade it one more time. Yep, to plus one. If that would be all, then be gone with you. You'll spoil my focus. Uh, let me tell you, he does not like his focus spoiled. So, we should be able... I don't think I rested at that bonfire. I hope I didn't. Or that was a waste of a homeward bone. Alright, well. Still in here, but close enough. So, I am thinking... Of going through... Sen's Fortress, or Sen's Funhouse. It's called a whole bunch of different stuff. I'll just call it the annoying place in Dark Souls. Get out of here. It's annoying to me simply because I absolutely hate... I hate how much backtrack there is. Because some of the backtrack in that place is completely optional. You, you don't have to pick up every item you see a lot of the stuff is thrown in front of you but there's just a couple items that for for some people can be really important like the covetous gold serpent ring and a couple of the other things that you've really just got to go you have to backtrack or just already know where it's at to find it unless you get lucky because things are a lot of things are trapped behind walls that can be knocked down with the weird boulder system that's right in the middle that someone always turns. Basically, there's like four different directions that these boulders can go, and they're always shooting out. Ow. And it becomes... Oh, no. Ooh. Oh, God. Oh, God. Ooh, I must have caught the ledge there because I was pretty sure that was death. I want to try to take out the Iron Golem without having to use Tarkus. I'm pretty sure I can do that. 
I usually just have him in there because if I want to pick, like, if I want to pick up his gear, I think you have to summon him for that fight. And then later on in An Orlando, when you get to the big rafter area, and you can turn the bridge there, you can turn that bridge to go down to that bottom floor that you're above when you first enter in there. And his body is in the corner, right next to that huge painting. But, I, I don't think I'm going to have a need for his armor. So I'm going to stick with what I've got. Ha, ah, you can't damage me because I'm covered in fire protection. So now i got to wait for him to come down. Hopefully before that guy gets to me. He's taking his time, so... There we go. Oh, no. Run! And come to think of it, I don't know why I didn't take the elevator. Oh yeah, because this pig isn't dead and I was gonna... I wanted to kill this pig because there's a chance he can drop his helmet. It's not guaranteed. Well, there's a, there's like three of these guys in the whole game that you can fight. And each of them have a chance to drop it. Once, once one of them does drop it... Like, say, if I were to get it from this guy, then the other two never can. Because it's a one time, you get one per playthrough. Where'd he go? Oh, he's stuck over there. Oops. This one, though, unlike the other two you encountered, this one has a giant hole in his back where his armor is. So he can be backstabbed. Making him considerably easier than the other two. But still, see, look. Oh, I missed. He takes a ton of fire damage. Yeah, that part right there where his tail is, is not in the other two. Well, he didn't drop it. I believe I got the basement key. The goal is, is I'm gonna fight every boss. Or I'm gonna attempt every boss. Like, obviously certain ones I have to beat. But, like, things like uh, Black Dragon Calamite and the DLC, Manus... Uh, well, obviously, to beat the DLC, I have to beat Manus. But as far as, like, Black Dragon Calamite, he's an optional boss anyway. And he's one of the worst for me to go up against. I hate fighting him. I really don't even like looking at him. He's just that annoying. Let's see. Let me see if I can purchase anything from good old Andre down here. You need it. Oh, I didn't learn your gesture. Cannot buy the crest of Artorius yet, but I'll have to end up picking that up. I'll get this weapon and this armor smith box. And actually, if I have any soul consumables, I do not. I will have to get that crest. I'll probably have to farm up some souls unless I just run into a bunch of consumables. Uh, because that is the only way to access Sif, which I will have to ha beat Sif to get Artorius's ring to fight the four kings in the abyss. Which is a lord soul, you have no option but to get it. And something I actually learned recently about the four kings is that they're a... DPS test inside the game. You have to be able to do so much damage in a short amount of time to them. Oh yeah. To prevent them, from, because they spawn in regardless of whether you have finished off the one you're fighting. And it's, it's called the Four Kings because their health bar is equivalent to only four of them. 
but essentially if you could just continuously dodge, never get hit, and they keep spawning in, it will spawn in, I'm pretty sure, an infinite number of them, till you have, till you can't, like, even move. This guy up here shooting lightning bolts at me. Oh no. There you go. Oh! Go dodge somewhere else. Some large titanite. This guy. Let's wake him up. Hey, buddy. Eat up. Instead of having the boulder hit this wall, if I stand right up against it and guard and he does that. Yep, he knocks it out for you. Oh, I missed. Where's good old big hat? There you are. You seem quite easy. A rare thing in these times. I am Logan. I'm a bit cooped up, as you can see. I have a bright idea. Suppose you set me free. I'm old and empty-handed, but I could repay you with knowledge and sorcery. This place is melting my mind. The inactivity is right. Sure, I'll free you. Oh, heaven. Now what do I get? Thank you. I'm safe. And I'd love to resume my travels. But I must log a few things first. And I owe you a favor. I will return to Farling Shrine. Speak with me there. So that I may impart my sorcery. I like how he promises you all that. Like, I'll teach you sorcery. Set me free, I'll do whatever you want. And he just ends up getting captured. Like, the whole game is pretty much where's Waldo, but with Big Hat Logan, and which prison is he locked up in now? Not to mention, even though, because, like, I have eight intelligence. I don't even have double digits. He tells you all that stuff, and then when you actually see him later on in Firelink Shrine, he just informs you that you're an idiot. And that he actually can't teach you anything. Get this boulder to come down again. Oh, I didn't take it out. Here it is. Get that ring of steel protection. It's pretty much just a big physical defense boost. I think there's a there's a lot of rings in the game. Some are for elemental damage. Uh, but there's some big defensive boosting rings. And that one is for physical defense. Oh, it's about to come down. There we are. Jump off up here. Get another soul. That. I actually don't understand the point of the black sorcery armor. I don't think it's any better. I think it's actually just an aesthetic. It's it's not the same color as that like brown. I'm not doing that. That elevator actually has a trap on it. Um, yeah, I believe I can go up this way. Yeah. With this, going out that door. I remember the first time I run through this place. It was absolute torture because I was, I didn't know that there was just a bunch of stuff on the floor that could essentially, like stepping on it was pretty much death. 
I didn't know how to build very good characters, so it was just not a good time for me. <laughs> but then after going through it, it doesn't take that long to figure out. You can go through this place like maybe three times and really figure out everything's placement, and then it becomes easy. But that first time going through it is a if you've never played Dark Souls and you do like I do and you don't want to spoil stuff or do it the easy way and just look it up, finding it out on your own can be a nightmare. Okay, I don't assume you're going to attack. We're almost to the Iron Golem. And to the worst bonfire placement I think I have ever witnessed in a game. I will never understand why this is here. And since we're so close to the boss... I will kindle this just so I can have 10. I can actually, because we killed Pinwheel so early, I've been able to put all these uh, fires up to like, it's max kindling and have 20 Estus flasks. The reason I haven't is because I can, I can pace myself with a very minimal amount of Estus. And I really have to save up the humanities that I'm finding. That way I don't have to farm them because our weapon is going to run. No! Our weapon is gonna run off humanity. It pretty much needs it as its big main source of damage. See, cause I'm doing like 225 for that. Yeah, like 300 and something damage right now. But when I upgraded it, it cut a big amount of the physical damage that I do to enhance the fire damage that the sword does. And that damage goes up even higher with the more humanity that I have on me. Not in my inventory, but like... But actually in my little humanity bar up there next to my life and stamina. Make the jump. There's a merchant right there. He's kind of trapped in here because the... I think it's either his armor is too heavy or he just doesn't like the giants throwing the fire. I think there's a key down here. Yeah. And this unlocks a pretty big shortcut for us. Cage key. And pretty much this shortcut takes you straight uh, takes you straight back to the entrance from the top of the fortress. So it, it, that will come in handy eventually. And I think he sells green titanite shards. <laughs> What? What? Who, who are you? Ah, another undead, eh? I took on Sam's fortress alone, but I'm no different from those vile creatures. I was driven by conceit. Ah, you think you're different? That you can handle it? Yes, I remember that feeling. For I was the same. So, let me help you out with your soul searching. There's nothing more to say. What else? Finished. We're both on the brink, you see. End of story. You bloody fool. Okay, so basically he's died a ton thinking he could take the place on. And now he's going to, I believe, just go hollow. Oh, great sword, great axe. Oh. He 
sells Onion Bro's armor. Um. Yeah, and here's the Durang's boost magic and boost lightning defense. I don't believe... Because I think I run into Onion Bro later. I think he just sells the armor, because usually when someone sells someone else's armor, that implies that they are dead. Don't even consider visiting Anor Londo. Not in your state. For a century they've tried and failed. The Night King Rendell, Black Iron Tarkas, and even Logan himself. You won't stand a chance, you'll be eaten alive. But go along if you wish. If only to deepen your despair. What? I thought I just tried to purchase something from you. Um. Yeah, about three of these should be good. Oh, can I make something of yourself? But nothing will come of it. And I should know. Yeah, he's pretty much just there to tell you that you're not going to make it. He's actually probably never seen someone with any kind of resolve or attempt to do anything. Yeah, that's why his armor is way too heavy and I don't think he can make that jump. Which one of these is it? There we go. And this is pretty much just to show you where the shortcut's gonna take us. Right back down here. Now please take me back. <laughs> oh, he didn't fall all the way. Well, dang. But yeah, the bonfire placement for that one bonfire right down there... I guess because they leave it open, they think you'll roll off of it to just take a, to take the death instead of getting hit by the fireball. And then when you jump off, and you're like, well, I'm going to die anyway, so I'll just jump off this so I don't get hit by the fireball. I don't know how he did not hit me. And then whenever you don't die, and you land right there next to a bonfire, it's one of those... Wow. This is really lucky, but why is this here? I can cut that... Two-year-old. So that's one of them. He throws fire into the arena in here and actually there's some things i can grab from over here he pretty much throws fire the entire time you were fighting uh the well i guess that's i actually can't go down there oh now i'm he, i'm not gonna i'm gonna try to take him on by myself I don't want to say he'll get in the way, because he really, he can take this boss by himself. Whoa! But I, actually, I just think I'm strong enough to do it on my own. I have severely miscalculated in my judgment. <laughs> I hit him in the wrong leg. One of his legs is incredibly weak. And if you can hit it to stagger him, it, it's game over for him. Like, you can actually... You can't one-shot him. But you can do... And then you can pretty much... When he's on that skinny little ledge, and he's got his back turned to one of the ends, and you hit him in his weak leg, he'll start to fall. But he'll catch himself. And then if you... While he's trying to regain balance, if you keep nailing him in the leg, he'll slip and fall, and he'll roll right off the edge of the arena. 
And the first time I did that, I was so confused. I thought I glitched the game and it wasn't going to give it to me. Because it took it a minute to load that I'd actually killed him. And I was just standing there waiting for the victory thing to pop up and it didn't. And I was like, I actually just glitched my game. What if he doesn't respawn? But after a couple of seconds, it gave it to me. Get out of here with that. I believe it's... This leg? Oh, don't grab me. No. Oh, thank goodness. Maybe it's the other leg. I don't exactly remember which one. Yeah, that one. You just gotta keep nailing him. Did you fall already? Oh no. Yep, he caught himself. I'm supposed to do here so we can now make it to An Orlando. That is a really nice cinematic view. That's probably one of my favorite cutscenes in the whole game. I also like how in different areas, depending on where you are in the game, the sun is in a different position. Because right now it looks like the sun is setting. But when you're really early on in the game, it's you can see it up in the sky. And then at different parts, it's like, like in a, the Darkroot Garden. I'm pretty sure the sun has completely set and it's nighttime when you're in the dark root garden. And we get. I'm trying to think. This is another firekeeper. You are a rare visitor. Welcome to the lost city of Anor Londo, chosen undead. If you seek Lord Gwyn's old keep, Exit here, and head straight yonder. If you are the Chosen One, a revelation shall visit thee. What follows thereafter depends upon you. So, I have nothing to reinforce the Estus Flask with. But, uh, kind of a reoccurring theme with all of the Fire Keepers is that they all have something wrong with them. With the very first one, I think her name is Anastasia? Uh, her tongue was cut out because she said something. She was supposed to keep her mouth shut and she said something. And so her tongue got cut out with 
uh, Quailag's sister, she sucked the poison out of one of her guys that she really cared about, and it poisoned her, and so she's dying, um, being kept alive by the humanity that her sister was bringing her. With that one, she has, I believe, she's either scarred, like, all over her face and all over her body, or she, she thinks she's, like, hideous to look at. Or something like that. So that armor was designed to cover up her face, cover up her entire body. You can't see any of her. And she does not want you to see her. Ow. You know what? I'm gonna cut off your tail. I didn't get to do that with the other dudes. Well, I hit it. I just gotta hit it probably one more time. Ow! You know, if you'd stay out of the sky, that'd be pretty cool. There we go. Let's finish you up. And a halberd. I think the only thing I'm missing now is the next one I kill. Because there's one more, and he's up there on top of that uh, little thing in front of us. I think he'll drop the helmet, and maybe the shield. You can you get a halberd, their tail axe, a helmet, and a shield from them. And to be honest, the armor's really not the best. It's not like groundbreaking armor. I think it's just a set pick up, just kind of like all the rest of them. But yeah, Iron Tarkus, if I would have summoned him for that fight, would be down there, off in the corner, underneath where I'm at right now. Let's see. I hate this part. It's easy to fall, easy to miss your footing. If you hit one of these guys trying to attack them, that can be a game over. They can hit you and that's game over. They can backstab you. I mean, it's a good thing that I can one-shot them. Ooh, but I mean, it, they can equivalently, equivalently one-shot me because I can screw this up royally. I'm actually just going to put up my shield and force him to come over here. It's a good idea to kind of let them come to you. Because you're trying to go to them, and then they meet you halfway on that little platform. Is never good. Oh, no. Oh, no. Nope. Go ahead and just fall. Oh, what'd you drop? No, nothing. Okay. Bye! Actually, I think you can see it from here. There are statues... You'll notice throughout the entirety of this place there will be statues of Gwen, statues of his daughter, all kinds of stuff. But then there's one statue that is broken. It's actually the statue that, um, that you have to go to to join the Warriors of Sunlight. That one was a statue of one of Gwen's sons. And there's a broken statue somewhere through here that kind of resembles it. Anywhere you go where his, there would have been a statue of his son, it's been destroyed. Because his son actually... And this is probably spoilers for the third one. Uh, he was like a war master when it came to fighting the dragons. He actually, and they say he uh, was exiled, and he, the translation is he was he lost the annals of history, but it's supposed to say he was lost to the annals of history. He was erased from existence, like he's still alive, but no one talks about him. No one acknowledges the that he exists. He's gone. 
because he sided, he took a dragon basically as a pet and then sided with them during their fight and basically said, I'm not, I'm, I know you're my dad, but I am not going to fight with you. Gwen took that as an offense and said, okay, well, you can have your dragon, you can go do whatever you want, but you no longer exist. No one will know you ever existed. And he's actually, you get to fight his son. It is, oh, what is his name? The... You fight him at the Arch Dragon Peak. It's the not the Storm Ruler because that's the name of a sword you use against uh, one of the bosses. I'm, I'll think of his name eventually. Nameless King. That's it. Uh, he is. And he's called the Nameless King because he would have been the king after Gwyn. But Gwen was like, well, I have, I have no son. Oh. Oh. Get him, can I get him? Yeah. That part can either be, you can either get that on the first try, or that can take you the rest of your life to get because they hit you facing the wrong way one time and you're off the edge. And we get to visit Sunbro once again. Oh, there you are. You've been quiet these days. Smooth summoning out there. Anytime you see my brilliantly shining signature, do not hesitate to call upon me. You've left me with quite an impression. I would relish a chance to assist you. Praise the sun, indeed. Got anything you else really to are say? fond of chatting with me, aren't you? If I didn't know better, I'd think you had feelings for me. Oh no, dear me. Pretend you didn't hear that. <laughs> you really are fond of... If oh no. He just repeats that. I remember, though, it used to be a big theory whenever there was only Dark Souls 1 and two before three came out that Solaire was actually uh, Gwen's lost son. And there were some actually some pretty uh, evidential facts to back it up. Like you could, it could be believed that he was his son. Just because, I mean, he wears a giant sun on his chest and his shield. His dad is the Lord of Sunlight. They both use miracles like a lightning spear, and there, there's a bunch of similarities where you could believe it. But then again, it it actually made no sense at all, because if he was erased from history, why is he walking around? Why doesn't he like be like, hey, you know, I've heard you're trying, you're the chosen undead, you're trying to get to my dad, I know where he's at, and then him help you. But we've made it halfway through Anne Orlando. Actually, I want to get first. I want to take him out. Get out of here. While I have the souls and the ability to do this. Which way is it? This way? Nope. This way? Nope. Right there. Hardcore parkour right there. And I might as well open up that door shortcut. Just to make this easier on myself. Ow! Unnecessary. Come on. Put down your shield. Oh no. 
Yep. I should have just ran for the door. But I'll get the shortcut. Everything in another video. Uh, I'm thinking this is where I'm going to end this one off. Let me at least turn back to human. There we go. But this is where I'm going to end this video off. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and share the video if you liked it. And this has been Pipnot, signing out.